In this video, we're going to talk about reciprocal functions of trigonometric functions. Now, in mathematics, a reciprocal of a fraction is, practically speaking, the fraction written upside down. So, more technically, a number multiplied by its reciprocal is equal to 1, provided the original number was not 0. Now, when we write reciprocals to many of the building block functions we use, like x, x squared, square root of x, e to the x, we can actually represent the reciprocal using negative exponents because these building blocks already have exponents. So for example, the reciprocal of x is 1 over x, and we can actually write that as x to the negative first. The reciprocal of x squared is 1 over x squared, which we could write as x to the negative second. The reciprocal of square root of x is 1 over the square root of x, and we can write that one as x to the negative 1 half, because a square root is a half power, right? And finally, the reciprocal of e to the x is 1 over e to the x, and we can rewrite that as e to the negative x. So often reciprocals are as simple as putting a negative in the exponent. But when we write the reciprocals of the trig building blocks, like sine x, cosine x, or tangent x, we don't actually have built-in exponents to use like these guys. So often these reciprocal functions turn up in advanced math, and we have actually developed specific names for these reciprocal functions. And here they are. 1 over sine x is written as CSCX, which stands for cosecant. And we read it as cosecant of x, even though we write down CSC. 1 over the cosine of x is written SEC of x. That stands for secant x. So 1 over cosine x is secant x. 1 over tangent of x is equal to a function we use COT of x, that stands for cotangent of x. So 1 over tangent x equals cotangent x. Now, once we start to use these, we can go through all sorts of simplifications similar to what we do when we simplify simple algebraic expressions. I thought it might be good to remind you how we simplify algebraic expressions before we start simplifying trig expressions. So let's take a look at a few that can be done with some simple rearranging. Now, you can also simplify these using exponent rules, but I'm going to simplify these with rearranging to remind you how that's done. Because as we simplify with trig functions, that's how we're going to do it, by rearranging and rewriting. Let's start with x to the negative first times x to the third. I can rearrange this by moving the x in x to the negative first to the denominator. When I do that, I will have x to the third over x to the first. And as a reminder, that's x times x times x in the numerator with just one x in the denominator. And we can reduce a pair of those x's to make one, leaving us with just x squared and no denominator. The next one we'll look at is x to the negative first over x squared. Again, we can rearrange. So that x squared can stay put where it's at in the denominator, and x to the negative first can move down, becoming x to the positive first in the denominator. We'll put a 1 in the numerator to hold the space of the numerator. And so now we have 1 over, and then in the denominator we have x squared times x to the first. When we put that together, Again, that's like 1 over the x squared makes x times x. And then there's another x from the x to the first. So now we have 1 over x times x times x, or 1 over x cubed. This may seem like a lot of extra work right now, but I am trying to make a point that you'll see as we move into trig functions. The last one here, we have x squared times y over x times y to the negative first. The x squared y can stay put where it's at not causing any trouble up there. The x can stay put where it's at in the denominator, but the y to the negative first, let's move that to the numerator, making it y to the first. Now we have x squared times y times y to the first over x. Well, that's really, I'm going to write it all out first. That's really x times x times y times y in the numerator and just an x in the denominator. Well, a pair of x's from the numerator and denominator 
can reduce to make a 1, leaving us with just x times y times y in the numerator, or x y squared. Okay, so that's just a reminder on how things can move around. Another good reminder is that when we write something like 1 over x to the negative first, what we're really writing there is 1 over 1 over x. And that's the same thing as 1 divided by 1 over x, which is the same thing as 1 times x over 1, which is the same thing as x. And so that's why 1 over x to the negative first becomes x. We're going to use that as we move into trig reciprocal functions.